the Very Auto Insider, a podcast covering some of the latest trends and things to know in cybersecurity. Now, this podcast is sponsored by Very Auto, which is a next generation employee monitoring and insider threat detection software provider. And so to learn more about how Very Auto can help protect your company, check out veryauto.com. Now, I'm Dr. Christine Zwapkor, the CEO of Cyber Pop-Up, which is an on-demand cybersecurity platform based in Chicago. And today I'll be sharing my expert take on how insider threats are impacting the financial sector, uh, which is a really critical topic. Now, quick rundown and background on me before I jump into that, in case you don't know who I am. Um, again, Dr. Christine Zwapkor, I have over a decade of experience leading a variety of different cybersecurity functions within the Fortune 100 space. Um, I've also served as a graduate level cybersecurity professor, earned a PhD in security engineering, um, become the youngest student and first African American woman to do so. Um, and so I've been featured in everything from um, business cranes to Wall Street Journal, uh, to Cheddar News and much more. And so I say all that to say that I live and breathe this industry every day. I'm truly obsessed. And so I'm excited to dig into this topic. Um, it's also very near and dear to me. I have a lot of interest in the role that human beings play in enabling and preventing attacks. And so I'm just excited to explore how this plays out in the financial sector. Now in today's world, um, financial institutions are the custodians of more than just money, right? When we look at banks and all of these uh, you know, different types of financial institutions, they also have very critical data elements and other assets um, that are at their disposal. And so as the financial sector embraces advancements like cloud infrastructure and other uh, digital technologies, of course, that data is exposed to cyber threats. And so hackers can easily monetize, compromise uh, personal information, financial data, and so on from customers on the dark web, um, as well as just the traditional issues that uh, a lot of large companies face in terms of how attackers go after them. The risks just continue to grow, I would say. And anytime you're dealing with high value data, right, there's just that added um, motivation for cyber criminals to go after that. And so during this episode, we'll talk through the latest trends on this topic, followed by some tips that can be uh, used to reduce insider threat risks within finance. Now let's jump right in. So uh, speaking of trends, one of the biggest issues in finance is credential theft and account uh, takeovers still to this day. And so um, this is basically where compromised credentials get accessed through various kinds of popular attacks like phishing, ransomware, social engineering, and other methods, but somebody is getting unauthorized access to credentials. Now, according to the 2021 Verizon data breach report, over 80% of hacking related breaches involved credentials or compromised credentials. And so uh, that's huge. These threat actors uh, use the stolen credentials of employees, of contractors, of customers, all to impersonate authorized users to carry out their attacks. Now, in the finance sector, these account takeovers can result in a lot of different things, from identity theft to the unauthorized transfer of funds, right, if somebody's able to get access to an account they shouldn't have access to and update uh, routing information or anything like that, that can be an issue. On the credential theft front, um, I want to share a quick example because I think this can highlight sort of the, the impact here. One breach that happened, it's been a while, but I think it again highlights this, is the massive LinkedIn breach uh, that happened a couple of years back. And basically in this case, a Russian hacker uh, stole the credentials of a LinkedIn engineer. Um, that hacker then used those stolen credentials to impersonate that employee to access LinkedIn's internal resources. So they're uh, posing as a trusted insider. And so this allowed them to log into uh, the LinkedIn user database, download millions of LinkedIn user names, uh, password hashes, email addresses, and more. These, while they're usually treated as uh, external threats, uh, right, because this is someone who is outside of the company who has stolen credentials and now gotten inside. The reality is that to a certain extent is, is an, an, an insider now. It's like, it's hard to distinguish or it's hard, hard to understand who you can then trust versus not when someone is using a legitimate credentials that they've stolen. And now imagine if something like this happens in a bank, right? Where there's you know thousands, 
hundreds of thousands, sometimes millions of customer accounts um, that can be downloaded and compromised. Um, well, I said imagine, you don't really have to imagine. Um, <laughs> it's reality. Um, there have been quite a few prominent breaches in the financial sector already. Um, and just to dig into a couple of them, just to, to highlight this. So for example, JP Morgan Chase, uh, they faced major insider threat issues when a former banker uh, reportedly stole uh, personally identifiable information and other account information, um, including a PIN, just all kinds of things. But all of this data is so that they could make unauthorized withdrawals from accounts. Now this employee or former employee, I should say at this point, of course, was caught when they offered to sell credentials to an undercover officer. And so this employee attempted to sell the login credentials of a, a bank account for a customer that had $180,000 or so in it. So while they were caught and eventually sentenced for this crime, it also impacted the bank's ratings and customer confidence and reputation and so on. And so this is uh, really important, important stuff and something that happens more often than I think people think. Um, another one in the finance sec uh, sector, Morgan Stanley, another household name, right? So um, the investment firm became a victim of an intentionally malicious um, insider attack that cost them a million dollars in penalties for failing to protect customer records, essentially. And so basically, a wealth manager within the company would routinely uh, take financial and personal data of the company's customers and store them on his private server. And so this breach happened as a result of his private server at home getting hacked. And so Morgan Stanley lost somewhere around $730,000 worth of customer records to these hacks. Make note, one thing that I wanna point out here is that Morgan Stanley wasn't hacked. The employee's home server was hacked and that's how this was found. And so it's a prime example of the importance of controlling the spread of data because at the end of the day, it's that insider, it's that employee who ended up causing this major breach. And it's something that you know can be avoided with the right controls in place, which we'll talk about um, in just a second. But last uh, example that I wanna touch on is Wells Fargo. And this just goes to show from the examples that I've given so far that pretty much every big player deals with this. Um, no one is really exempt companies, big and small. And so in the case of Wells Fargo, an account fraud scandal uh, became publicly known a few years back and uh, responsibility of this fraud sort of came from the top down. I mean, and so when you talk about like major like insider threat and, and schemes, this is, you know, next level. Um, millions of fraudulent savings and checkings accounts were opened for the bank's clients without consent. They were fined a combined $185 million due to that illegal activity. And then the company also faced uh, civil and criminal suits reaching an estimated almost $3 billion. And they continue to see some of the ramifications of that to this day. This is a unique uh, example of how insider threat is not always, you know, someone doing something on accident, while that, of course, is a very popular um, route. It's not always some rogue employee. It can be a very uh, coordinated and collaborative attack as well, um, or operation as well, um, which is even harder to detect. And so some of these controls and things that I'm going to talk about in a second are just absolutely critical to implement. And so on that note, um, before we get into the controls, I uh, just want to talk through a couple of things that are enabling uh, insider threats in the finance sector. So of course, there's user error, you know, in uh, sometimes people aren't intentionally trying to introduce these risks, right? We have to take that into consideration. There's people who, you know, might be rushing and, and download a file from someone that they trusted, but it turns out to be somebody who's impersonated. They might get a phishing email or some kind of like bogus request that says, you know, hey, why are these funds to uh, this account? Happens a lot in the finance sector, right? And so, um, but that ends up being bogus and they've actually wired the funds. Um, all kinds of user error and things that are not intentional. Um, but then you also have the intentional ones that we've talked about in a lot of the examples where people are just doing things that they shouldn't. And so in either case, I think there's a couple of things that you can do to, to avoid these. They're often enabled by things like a lack of checks and balances to prevent fraud from insiders. And so when you have layers of um, approvals, when you have segregation of duties, so one person is requesting, one person is approving, and when you have things like that in place, it reduces the 
a risk of fraud immensely. Um, having a strong account security control, so think the basic strong passwords, uh, multi-factor authentication, strong identity and access management, uh, really embracing a zero trust culture where you never trust, always verify um, is how they put it. But those are things that can really help on that front. Another area is misconfigured applications, insecure cloud environments. Those are all things that allow people to get unauthorized access to accounts and to uh, systems, um, which can be detrimental as well. And so I'm um, just another area to, to point out. Um, I say all this to say that is not an exhaustive list. There is a host of things that can contribute to attacks in this sector. Um, and so it's important to also, the same way that there's layers in, in these challenges, there has to be layers in the solution in order to combat that. Now, there are tons of ways to um, start to mitigate this risk. The first that I always point to is training and awareness. You cannot forget training and awareness, especially when you're dealing with people. Human beings are at the basis of a lot of these threats and attacks. And so the more you can inform your employees of what to do and what not to do, as well as your customers of what to do and what not to do, especially when it comes to social engineering, phishing, things like that, uh, that really goes a long way. I think it also helps, a lot of people don't talk about this, but it helps to raise awareness of like the controls that are in place to let people know that, hey, when you do sketchy things, you will get caught. And I think it's something that, again, isn't, isn't necessarily talked about a lot, but I think when people know that they're being watched um, or know that there are uh, chances that they'll get, get caught and grave consequences for what they're doing, it reduces, I think, the, um, the, the motivation or someone's willingness to go out and take that risk. And so I think that from an awareness standpoint, that can also help on the malicious insider side. Um, another one that goes hand in hand with insider threat detection is visibility and monitoring capability. So being able to know what's going on on your network, what's authorized versus what isn't in ways that are intelligent. I think traditional um, anomaly based detection solutions are a good start and a good foundational base, um, but there has to be intelligent context and things that you're able to add to that so that you have a much more solid and accurate picture of what a user is doing and whether that is um, authorized or not, especially if that is helpful when you start getting into that account takeover and credential theft where, you know, if someone has, if, if you're seeing that, I don't know, uh, Jane has logged in with their credentials from New York, which is where they're based and they're doing things that might not look abnormal, but when you add context and you realize that they're accessing things that they shouldn't be accessing in, you know, odd hours where they're making different requests or their behaviors have started to change um, over time, even if it's the smallest little things in real time, you can start to determine, hey, even if these are accurate login credentials, this might not actually be Jane and we might need to, to look into this um, or take some kind of action. Other things are, of course, having a solid data loss prevention program in place so that people aren't able to export data or leak data or share data beyond the approved uh, parameters. Uh, the last thing that I'll touch on uh, are policies and procedures for planning and response to insider threats, um, as well as for reporting insider threats. So this is another thing that doesn't get talked about a lot, but having a place for employees who suspect that insider threat um, is going on or that there's something malicious going on. You hear programs saying, you know, if you see something, say something. Those whistleblower programs can also go a long way in the finance sector because there's, I think, just a different element, a different level and opportunity for fraud and things like that to happen. And having solid whistleblower programs becomes absolutely critical. Now, we have covered a lot of ground here, um, but these are just a few ways to reduce the threats that can uh, that continue to impact the finance sector. And so um, hope that you've taken away a couple of key nuggets on things that can be done. That concludes the Variato Insider podcast for this week. This podcast is brought to you by Variato, which is an award-winning cybersecurity company whose solutions are anchored around four core pillars of cybersecurity protection. Those are employee monitoring and web filtering, insider threat detection, employee investigations, and ransomware support. 
So to learn more about how Variato can help protect your company, check out variato.com. Um, thanks for tuning in. Again, I'm Dr. Christine Zwakor, the CEO of Cyber Pop-Up. And it has, as always, it has been my pleasure to share these insights with you. So until next time, stay safe and secure out there, insiders.